hey guys it's Oogs. welcome to the channel and thank you for watching who the hell is mr raymond plans you might be asking me listen this brother used to be at barcelona sporting director or some sporting project at barcelona i don't know exactly what his role was at barcelona but it looks like uh, he was uh, very good on finding the next big things for the academy and promoted them to the first team people like pedri or ansu fati you know are the biggest name that you can remember in this current moment so apparently mr abramovich want him a chelsea football club for some sporting project so we don't even know if that's what uh, Marina is doing at the moment and what Marina is going to be doing. So it's still a little confusing, but it looks like uh, Mr. Abramovich want to change the club a little bit. He doesn't want to only spend a lot of money on expensive players. So we need to have some kind of long-term project and also short-term project. Short-term project is just like looking for the missing piece. Go on the market and buy one big expensive player and then use our academy product or some, some of the germs that we might find all over the world or something like that. And that is going to bring me to talking about Michael Emanalo. How about Michael Emanalo? I know, I know for all the online experts when he left Chelsea Football Club, they celebrated. If you just go on YouTube and you type just Emanalo sucked, you will see how many YouTube channels in the Chelsea community that celebrated when this brother was gone. Because according to them, according to their sources, Michael Emanalo was the problem at Chelsea Football Club. Listen, my friend, ignorance is a big disease. How the hell this guy who built on his own Chelsea Football Club Academy from A to Z became a problem? You ask yourself, those people just looking for attention, a popular opinion, a negative thing to do for they are on gain for money clicks but it has no sense at all this is the brother who built chelsea football club okay you have tammy abram today tomori mason mount Rhys james you can go even armando broja you know he detected those kids when they were kid babies nobody knew them brought them to the academy look at them today Everything we have today is because of this brother here, Michael Emanalo. You can make whatever theories and narrative you want to make. It's not going to change fact. You hear me? So, if you go also beside the academy that he built from, from the ground up, you can go to people like um, Salah, okay? He's the one who sent him. Lukaku before he he left, Mo Salah, okay, all the Belgian uh, players, you know, like um, De Bruyne also, Thibaut Courtois the Snake. You can go on and on and on. Why they didn't make it a Chelsea football club? It's not his fault. It was because of the managers that we had back then. Back then we used to have managers. Managers just mean you manage the team. You are in charge of who is coming and who is going. Emanalo will bring great youngsters present to somebody like Moreno or Conte. They will get mad. They will be like, no, I want to win now. I don't have time to, to nurse certain kids. I want a finished article right now. That's why we ended up by buying some dead wood alexander pato or uh, let's say falcao people like that you know quadrado just a quick fix because they want to win but imenalo was there for long-term project 
He was misunderstood and he couldn't take it anymore. Okay? With the pressure from Marina Granovskaya, the pressure from uh, Antonio Conte and all that because he wanted Peter Crouch at Chelsea Football Club, you know, Andy Carroll, Mbeteke, people like that just to win for a season and then leave them in the club as dead would. So he was like, you know what? I have enough. My job is done. I built this team. You don't want to use those kind of uh, those kind of amazing kid that I am bringing from all over the world. I'm done. He was gone, and people made it as if he was sacked or whatever. It's a long story, but you know how it goes, right? Social media. So for me, instead of going for Ramon Plants, who is from Barcelona, because of the name Barcelona, I will go back and bring Michael Emenalo back at home because he knows the club he knows what to do and he, he he's a very good guy so for me i don't want to see this this brother here mr ramon from from barcelona i will get our own michael emenalo in this business that we're in uh, uh, it's often you often hear people talk about personalities and everybody talk about players' characters. And sometimes when people talk about players' characters, they refer to uh, the prankster who likes to pull his teammates' uh, pants down uh, or the bravado uh, player who takes credit for everybody, everybody else's performances or who blames his teammates for mistakes that are his. But N'Golo Kante embodies uh, true personality and character because his personality and character uh, comes with a heavy dose of intelligence and humility. Uh, when N'Golo arrived for the first time for training session in Minneapolis in the United States and uh, trained for the first time, of course we knew how good he was. And all top players can attest to this. Everybody knew how good N'Golo was, that's why we signed him. Uh, but after the training session, all the superstars at Chelsea Football Club gravitated towards him to give him a hug and a wonderful welcome. It is a testimony to a recognition of his wonderful talent. We knew then that we got lucky, and I sent flowers to Leicester Football Club <laughs> for letting us have it. I have a mental test for you about N'Golo. I want you to see if you can remember a sliding tackle from him. Yes, he doesn't slide tackle because he's intelligent. He gets in position. Uh, he knows how to nick the ball away. Uh, he anticipates uh, uh, intelligently. And that's what makes him great. It's not because he's 10 feet tall. It's not because his muscles are popping out from every part of his body. It's because his brain is absolutely, fantastically glued to playing football. He understands what he needs to do, and he does them right. N'Golo is also a very special human being. If you come to our training ground in Cobham and you're not sure if he was there, all you have to do is walk around and, and look at the player's car park, and you will see the tiny little bit of car. <laughs> and that will tell you that N'Golo is uh, in the building. He's still complaining about the uh, extravagant 500 pounds he spent on that car. <laughs> but, but that's who he is. He wants a simple life. He lives a simple life. He has a lot of respect for his teammates <laughs> and for everybody. What you see on the pitch is what you get. Uh, he, he plays in, uh, in the best sporting way that you can possibly want a professional to play. He doesn't injure anybody. He doesn't look to injure anybody. He's respectful to, his, uh, to, his, to the opposition, but he's very, very competitive. But don't let that fool you. He's also a warrior. You don't win two titles back to back with two different teams unless you know how to fight. And this man knows how to fight. And he shows it every single day in training. There is so much I can say about N'Golo Kante tonight. Um, but I've been allotted only three minutes and it's not enough, but I want to express the great